Well, good morning, fellow narrow gaugers. Um, we're here on the Youngstown and Southeastern Railroad in Youngstown, and we're getting ready to make the big move today. We're going to bring these two cars over to Youngstown Steel Heritage. All right, let's take a little closer look at the equipment. Um, you see, I've already taken a lot of the various parts and all that off the cars to make it easier to truck them. Um, yeah, the caboose is not in all that bad a shape. There's some rust, some pack rust between the uh, the sheets can take care of that. Um, <clears throat> the uh, the box car is in excellent condition, and it's already been stripped down. All the all the air brake equipment's gone off of it. I cut everything out from underneath of it so it'll sit down flat on the trailer. Both of the plug doors work real well. I mean, the floor is in great shape. It's it's just an absolute gem of a box car, and uh, so glad that we got this. And let's take a look at the uh, that's the truck that's going to haul the box car. This is a rather interesting trailer with a, at least a 50 foot deck on it. And there's the. Uh, Y&S crew heading south with uh, a cut of empty box cars. So the uh, the cranes ought to be showing up here at any time. And once they get here, we'll get everything set up and ready to go. Hey there. Well, we're en route over to the uh, GNL narrow gauge. I'm following New York Central Caboose 21119, <laughs> uh, and uh, with a boxcar ahead of it. This is this is uh, this is great. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, it's about two o'clock. Uh, it took a little longer than we anticipated getting things loaded. Um, no big deal. Just uh, you know making sure the trailers are set up right and uh, uh, getting everything tied down correctly and all that. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we're in a little convoy here of railroad equipment. 50-foot box car, bay a caboose, and a high rail truck on the way over to the narrow gauge. Um, so once we get over there, we're going to unload everything, get set to 
box car into position first and then put the uh, caboose on the uh, on the platform where it goes and uh, we don't have the trucks yet for the uh, caboose those will be coming over the weekend so sometime this spring I'll just have to you know jack it up get the cribbing out of the way and then put the trucks in no big deal uh, we kind of I anticipated that that they might not be able to um, get the trucks out here in time so we got that taken care of so uh, uh, yeah pretty good day here on the JNL we're getting our engine house and our new office delivered <laughs> All right, it's about 4.30. Uh, we just wrapped up for the day. Um, we're going to continue on Monday uh, since we didn't have time to get the uh, the caboose unloaded. But we did get the uh, the boxcar where it's going to go. So now let's here. Let's let's take a look at our new engine house. So it's sitting up on a couple of ties for the weekend because the uh, the center bowls on this have to come off so that the car can sit down flush against the uh, the concrete so the center bowls in there there's eight bolts I've got a torch off and uh, drop those out of the way and uh, then we can set the car down off of the uh, off the ties on Monday um, so I guess I'll explain how this is going to work here but uh so the uh the track to come the switch that comes off at rupert behind the box car there is going to come around to here and we're going to put a transfer table in that's going to go from here over to the box car so it'll be a 35 foot transfer table uh long enough to put the locomotive and tender on it um and then we're going to have a opening in the end of this car with a roll-up door and uh, we'll store 58 and the tender inside which will be facing that direction and then when we go to fire up we can have the brookville sitting outside we'll just pull the locomotive out onto the transfer table and uh, slide over and right out and onto the main now behind me we will have several tracks, but the one track that the locomotives are on will remain. We might have a couple more over here. I'll have a track on this side of the table that lines up with the lead so that if we have a long train we want to store, we could just store it on that track and be room for several cars in there. And uh, that way, if you want to pull, a, I don't know, if we want to have the, the train of steel mill equipment over there we can just pull that out also have room for the passenger train to sit in there when we're not running the passenger train all right so that pretty much explains what we plan to do here so let's take a look inside the uh the box car in there Let's see if I can get this freed nothing these h10 locks it's too bad American doesn't make them anymore my god these are so nice <laughs> they also double as a uh, as a beating device Alright, that's enough to get in. 
Okay, so yeah, this is going to be the end where 58 will be sitting. And then this end here is the, uh, the end that runs out to the, uh, to the transfer table. Um, so we still have a couple of rails to put in here. But uh, yeah, I think this will be a nice uh, this will be a nice uh, car for us to have for uh, um, an engine house. I mean, it's it's pretty much airtight, um, you know, good roof. We're going to put some insulation in here, especially in that other end, so that when we want to run in the winter. Um, the, uh, the locomotive will be in an insulated area and uh, we can keep it warm all winter. Now, <laughs> of course, this thing is only, you know, I don't know, nine and a half feet wide or so on the inside, if that. So, with 58 being 68 inches wide, there's not a lot of space. So this isn't going to be a place we're going to be working on the locomotive. It's, it's mostly going to be for just putting it away and if we're going to work on it we'll pull it outside work on it outside this is just where we're going to store it at uh, out of the weather and uh, you know probably the um, the plug doors are not going to be operational because if we insulate it um, we'll have to wall those off and what not be you know, we will not be able to open the plug doors uh, because of the insulation stuck to the door then you couldn't open it and slide it out of the way but with the um, roll-up door on the end, we won't need that anyways. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah, this is, uh, I, I'm, I'm very, very pleased. This is, this is wonderful um, that this is here. It's a lot of work still to go. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is going to be a great place. And, and, you know, the best thing about it is that it's, according to the, you know, the local government, this is not a building. This is a box sitting on the ground, you know, so uh, so it's not a permanent structure that I needed a permit to, uh, you know, put in here. And it was free. I mean, you, can't, you can't beat free. Um, let's take a look out the door here. So even the car is going to sit down another eight inches or so on the pad even so it's good the floor is going to be up in the air some so that this lead is going to be on a fairly decent grade to get up to the transfer table which is no big deal All right, everyone, I'm gonna sign off. I'm pretty tired, time to go home. This uh, this video is gonna be a two-parter, actually. Uh, this one here on the boxcar, the next part is gonna be unloading, unloading the caboose on Monday. And uh, then we'll take a look at the caboose and what we're gonna do with it at, the, at that time. So uh, I wanted to uh, be sure to thank everyone, um, CSX that donated the cars to us, um, Grimm's Crane Service uh, who um, who did all the, the heavy lifting, uh, everyone at the Youngstown Southeastern Railroad uh, and the, uh, the parent company Midwest, Midwest and Bluegrass Rail for, uh, for supporting the project and uh, providing space to store the equipment and uh, also you know track time to uh, get everything loaded out. And, uh, and of course, thanks to all of you who continue to watch these videos and uh, support the uh, channel. Uh, you know, I, I really appreciate it. I, I enjoy the, the comments that you all make. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a labor of love for me. And, it, well, it has to be because it's 25 degrees and I'm standing out here looking at a boxcar in the snow. <laughs> So, uh, all right, I'll, uh, I'll talk with you all soon. And take care. Thanks a lot. Hey there, fellow air gaugers. Well, welcome to day two of the big move. Uh, it's a lot colder today than it was on Thursday, I'll tell you that. Um, so, the first thing we did is I had them 
pick the box car up, put it on a little bit more cribbing so I can get underneath and do some work on the car before we set it down on the concrete. Uh, now we have the, uh, the trucks in place that came off the nickel plate caboose that uh, we traded with the Fort Wayne Railroad Historical Society. And now we've got the cranes in position and we're about ready to make the lift with the uh, caboose. So I've got the GoPro set up to hopefully record that if it doesn't uh, decide to shut itself off because it doesn't want to work because it's too cold either. <laughs> um, but uh, hopefully we'll get some good video of that. And then once we get the caboose in place, we've got two shipping containers to move uh, down there. Move them from on the left side over there where the 57 and 60 are sitting. And then that'll be it. well so there you have it both uh, pieces of equipment are now uh, in their new homes and uh, as time goes on I'm gonna start working on them and converting them over to the uh, to the uses that we need for them um, so my uh, my GoPro camera uh, did fail it gave me an SD card error so um, yeah I didn't get that good uh, uh, video of of setting the caboose in place, but oh well, I don't know, something, some issue I gotta deal with. Um, so for those of you interested in what that little adventure cost us, well, the uh, the caboose was um, donated by CSX, but it was in Petersburg, Virginia, and it cost about eight thousand dollars to truck it from Petersburg to uh, Youngstown, and uh, we stored it um, for free. Up until we need to move it the uh, box cars were also donated by CSX and they came on their own wheels for free um, so we really did not have any cost involved in the uh, in the acquisition of the box cars okay so for the uh, the two days of having Grimm's crane out here to uh, do all the moves plus the movement of the um, of the caboose that truckload that came to seven thousand four hundred and eighty dollars. The uh, the trucking of the box car on that big specialized trailer was twenty nine hundred. Uh, so you know we're a little over ten thousand dollars on just the move, if you include bringing the caboose over from Virginia. Yeah, we're about you know eighteen, and with a few other expenses, let's just round it up to twenty. Out of that. We did um, make the deal to swap the trucks, uh, so we're getting a little bit of money for that, and then we did sell the set of uh, um, boxcar trucks for $2,500. So, you know, we've we, we've uh, got 20000 into it, but let's say we've got maybe, by the time it's all over with, $4,000 out of, um, you know, sales and trades and all that. So... You know, that still leaves uh, about 16 grand that's unaccounted for that I had to raise or find or, you know, whatever. So, yeah, this stuff is expensive. Just a little move like that is uh, incredibly expensive. Um, you know, we, uh, we don't do a lot of uh, formal fundraising. Um, we should do a little bit more. Um, I'm, I'm looking at running the train this summer hopefully we get enough people to come in to ride the train that's going to uh, bring enough revenue in so that we can continue doing stuff like this but you know you're looking at okay 20 grand on the boxcar 
and Caboose, 30,000 last year on just the two Canadian porters. You know, I, I, it's, it's, it's a lot of money, but I think it's, it's worth it. And we have some good donors uh, to provide uh, some, some revenue for that. Um, if you would like to help us out, uh, we have memberships available at youngstownsteel.org for uh, $20 a year for supporting memberships and then $50 a year for uh, people who want to become active in the organization. Uh, I'd, I'd really appreciate if you if you consider becoming a member. That would be the best way to, to uh, help us out. Um, tolerating the Facebook, or not the Facebook, but the, uh, the, the YouTube ads, that provides anywhere from $120 to $200 a month, depending on how many videos I upload and how many people view them. So, you know, we get a little bit out of that. That, uh, you know, that, that helps out some. Uh, any, any stream of income is good. But, uh, all right, I'm going to sign off here. And uh, I don't know what the next video is going to be. Probably uh, maybe something on what the modifications we're going to do to the caboose and the boxcar and all that. But uh, I'm hoping we get some good weather here pretty soon. I'm tired of the snow. I'm tired of the 20-degree days. We have four months until opening day and our first public train ride. I've got a lot of work to do, and I don't have time for any more cold weather and snow. So uh, let's, let's pray for good weather so I can get to work and get all this stuff done. So uh, until next time, take care, everyone.